Ah, king h3. Very clever. Very clever. Huh. Hello and welcome. My name is William and in this video we will be looking at Magnus Carlsen's best banter blitz game on Chess24 against Chess24 user Cleo PL who's rated 2881. This game took place during the fourth banter blitz held by Chess24. Let's see the game. c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, g3, c5, bishop g2, knight c6, e3. We have an English setup and after Cleo PL plays e3 he wants to go knight e2, so then the knights protect each other. Magnus now makes it interesting, as he mentions in the commentary. e3. Okay. Um, the thing is, if, if the right response is usually considered e6, and then knight e2, knight e7, d4, and so on, it's unbelievably dull, so I'm going to try something else. He now decides to play bishop takes c3, and after b takes c3, b6, planning to castle queenside. A queenside pawn attack looks unlikely now because the c pawns are doubled. d3, bishop b7, knight e2. Perhaps a bad move. It's not the best square as it gives black the option to attack the g3 pawn with h5 then h4. An alternative is to play knight f3. This makes h5 not as likely. Moves could go, let's say, knight f6, if castle and then d6. You might even move the knight, let's say knight h4, with ideas of f4 next, e4, and then the bishop could come to e3 instead. Back to the game, Cleo Piel chose knight e2, d6, castle, queen d7, getting ready to castle queenside, and now he plays a very strange move, bishop b2. No idea why he played that, better was e4, and then the bishop can come to g5, or it can come to e3. After bishop b2, Magnus castles. a4, knight a5. There's no queenside attack after this move. Knight c1, planning knight b3. And trying to get the a pawn moving. After knight c1, Magnus took on g2. And after king takes g2, h5, getting ready. Knight b3, so what? h4. Doubled pawns do not matter. As long as you do not allow white to penetrate. For example here knight b3 is not a great move because after queen b3 a5 is possible, h4 is possible, it becomes an unnecessary race. Back to the game after knight b3 h4 take. Now Magnus plays a great move, he doesn't play the obvious recapture of the knight on a5, he plays h takes g3. Are you enjoying the video so far? Then why not like the video and subscribe to the channel at the same time. Back to the game and now he takes back. Good move from white, realizing uh, there is no checkmate. If queen h3 check, you go king f3. If given a chance, the white king can actually head back to e2. If you check, king back to g2, check, king f3, and then b takes a5. You could play this if you want. White could now go king e2, and then the queen can come to uh, b3 next. Looks like white's king is kind of safe here. It can oscillate between e2 and d2. Back to the game. Magnus just recaptures. After h takes g3 take and now taking the knight on a5. Look how good the black queen is. Black has two great possibilities to check on h3 and to check on the b7 g2 diagonal. After b takes a5, white now plays rook h1, but actually he can play e4. Blocking the diagonal, no check here for the black queen. This is not a threat because same thing, king f3, if knight f6 you can go rook h1, if check, king g2. Maybe the worst is over for white, but in such a position black is still better. They can come off, take, take, here, and then in this end game, just like the game, Black is a bit better. Back to the game. After rook h1, Magnus took on h1. And after queen takes h1, queen b7 check. It looks like white has blundered, but it is for this precise reason why I did this video. In this position, white has a brilliant move. Or else he's just uh, losing a piece. Can any of you see where on earth you should place the white king? 
you can't go king h2 because queen takes b2 there is no threat here you can check the king can hide there is no threat of queen a8 because the queen can just come back check and then queen c7 check you can hide so king h2 is not the best move king g1 same problem queen b2 so the king has to go to another square and the only good square that is left is king h3 what a brilliant move a brilliant attempt this is the reason i did this video magnus respects his opponent's move by saying ah king h3 very clever very clever huh. we see the idea if queen takes b2 then rook b1 and then it's over if you move the black queen then there's checkmate in one move the move is queen c6 check in such a position black has to give up the queen but then after this white will be winning easy entry squares for the white queen you can go here attack this you can come here come here that's why in this position magnus now swaps queens off and plays the end game take take king d7 call move the king can go to e6 or c6 and then the rook can go to b8 after king g2 rook b8 and cleopiel white now plays bishop a1 which is a sad move this bishop is criminally bad why even bother to save it activate white's rook rook h8 is a better option even though black might get a superior rook end game it is better than being a piece down the bishop on a1 doesn't really exist if you take and then take rooks rook c2 rook d2 trying to get after these pawns if you go rook a8 we can start taking check king can come to e6 rook takes a5 rook c3 and we can take on c4 next rook here rook takes c4 rook a4 and then black is in charge in this rook end game back to the game white plays bishop a1 and now knight f6 the big problem is white's rook is not active there are no entry squares you can't go to h7 or to h8 king f3 rook b3 king e2 and now knight g4 hitting f2 and giving yourself the chance to come back to e5 f3 knight e5 hitting f3 and d3 so white decides to chase again with f4 but then the problem is the knight can just come back to g4 king f3 and now f5 black is really a piece up the knight on g4 is doing such a great job compared to the terrible bishop on a1 e4 rook a3 and then rook takes a4 and now rook a1 trading rooks trading rooks doesn't really make sense because you are down a pawn and the a pawn is so strong but what else is possible not a lot if you take and then take you try to activate your rook unfortunately rook a2 is a brilliant move because if you move the bishop then there's checkmate in one move with rook f2 white has a very unpleasant end game it is close to lost already rook a1 played by white take take and now a4 white stops a3 with bishop b2 and now e5 let's just see the rest let's see how magnus finishes the game off take 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 check and now king e6 let's talk more play i have a very easy winning plan yeah since he cannot leave the d2 pawn i was d3 pawn i was gonna say yeah i'm sorry dude i'm not that slow nor that weak mate next okay so a nice victory by magnus carlson in his fourth banter blitz on chess 24 thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video then why not like the video and subscribe to the channel at the same time make sure to press that bell to get notified each time a new video is released plus check out all the other videos i know you'll love too until next time